I knew at that point, I knew there, I knew I was having mental problems. I knew it. Because your brother was starting to look strange to me and stuff. What do you mean? He was starting to look like like maybe the devil's son, that kind of crazy stuff. And then I wrote on the front door, Jesus lives here, and I put all the holy cards up. Your grandmother said that your Aunt Connie did that. Put all the holy cards up on the windows, like protection type thing. And I knew I was having him. What are you rebelling against? What do you got? We're trying to change something. Skateboarding is a way of learning how to redefine the world around you. The owners of this country don't care about the poor and the old. Who? Hey, uh, who? Oh, what's up, you miscreants and you misfits and the outcast of society? It's Casper, and I'm back for another episode of Screaming at a Wall podcast. <laughs> I got a special guest today. That sounds a little loud. I need. To, I think I need to bring that down a little bit. I'm I'm yelling, and I have a tendency to yell when I'm around my family. Why do you think that is, uh, Debbie Joe? Welcome to the podcast. Uh, cause you're from a loud Italian family. Italian and, and Italian and what? There's another. There's another Italian. ingredient to that family. <laughs> Italian and black. Oh God, damn! That's a whole lot of loud, as you could hear from the back. Yeah, can you go ahead and? Yeah, we're recording. So if you could just uh, zip it. What's up, mom? How's it going? Uh, it's going real good. Uh, I'm thankful that it's Thanksgiving. You're thankful that that seems a little generic. <laughs> what are you thankful for, Mom? My adorable son. Son? son. You just left out the other and one. And wow. the other son. The other son. Where's the other son at? With an S on son. No, but seriously though, if you could keep so it down. Sorry, I'm sorry. I yeah. Say it. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. We're hand sh- we're handshaking now. Okay. Um, the other son's uh, locked up, huh? Oh, yes, unfortunately. Oh, that is unfortunate. Um, so, yeah, one of the reasons that I wanted to have you on the podcast is uh, not a whole lot of people know of, know of my, my history of my life. And I thought, who better to have on the podcast than you? You've been, you've been on the, that ride for the entire time. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and you've led quite an interesting life up until this point, right? I mean, aside from having your kids locked up in prison. Uh, yes, I have. Yeah. Um, where, so you grew up in Philadelphia? Or you, were, you were born in 1953. You just had your birthday. I had you over, and uh, we celebrated your 50... Wait, hold on. We're not... We won't say... It. Yeah. Not we, the 50... Fi- we won't say... We won't say the number. Okay, but you were, you, you were born sometime in the second half of the this last century, right? The second part of it, post nineteen fifty. Uh, yes, that's that's right. And wh- where were you born? I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. How was that growing up? So you're you're one hundred percent Dago, WAP, without uh, papers. I'm a WAP. You're a WAP. Uh, how was it? Uh, how was it growing up in Philadelphia? How long were you in Philadelphia for? Uh, <clears throat> until I was uh, eleven. To eleven years old. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you nervous? Uh, I am. What What are you nervous about? I'm nervous about being on a podcast. <laughs> Why are you? Ne- you're just talking to your son over here. I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Is it weird or? It's just different. Is it different? Have you ever really talked about your life to, I guess, anywhere, anybody really? Oh, yeah. People, one one person at a time. One per- Well, you're speaking to one person at a time. There's nobody else. Either. This is a figment of your imagination. It's uh-huh. not re- I'm not even recording right now. Oh, you're not? <laughs> no. Is this a rehearsal? This is a rehearsal, so you can just oh. feel comfortable. And okay. I usually do like a, a pre-interview before the, the actual interview, just to, you know, make sure you get comfortable. <clears throat> mm-hmm. 
So, I mean, you're all right. I'm going to grab my coffee, though. So, you, uh, you were born, Ty, what generation were you? Uh, second generation. Second generation? Yeah, my, my mom was born here also. Okay. But my grandparents were born in Italy. Uh, where, where at in Italy? Uh, let's see. Uh, on my mom's side, I always get a mix up. Na- Nagatasta? Nagatesta. Ambruzzo. Taramo. And I guess on my da- grandpa's side, I'm not really sure about it. Um, I think they were, they, they were from the same place, weren't they? They must have been. Yeah. Because I don't remember hearing another place. So, so uh, grandma, uh, grandma's last name was, um, what was her? Dur- Durante. 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 And she was related to Al Martino, the famous singer slash movie guy, Al Martino. Yeah, that was her cousin. He played uh, Johnny Fontaine in The Godfather. She would always talk about him and... Uh, would uh, like have his like pictures up. She was like cousin Al, cousin she, Al. She was very <clears throat> so proud of that fact. Yeah, was she? Yeah, very proud of that. Oh, she would tell everybody that. Everybody would be in the supermarket. Yeah, like, hey, be, uh, be, did you know? <laughs> she'd somehow find like a connection she, to be able to bring that up. She would. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, she's actually somebody that I I wish that I would have been able to do this with before she passed away. She had just. Just passed. Had away. a lot of stories. Oh yeah, she had she had a very interesting life. Yes, she did. Um, but we're gonna talk about you. So, up until how was your childhood like growing up? Like, so you didn't know your father, right? Uh, no, that's kind of complicated. We like uh, we like complications. I mean, that's really what this show is about: is the complexities of life. Okay, well, I have three brothers and sisters, and they're... Can I mention last names? Oh, uh, you can, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, you could hear that. You can hear them? What were you saying earlier about you have an Italian and black family that's very, very loud? Yeah, well, he's one of them. Okay, yeah. All right, no, go ahead. Uh, three brothers and sisters with the last name Wren, and I always grew up assuming that that man was my dad then after i got that married their, that the guy the, the their dad the was that, my dad that grandma was with at the time yeah her husband they never she never told you that that no. wasn't your dad but after we after uh, i got married she finally told me that wasn't my dad oh, you didn't know until after you got married that he wasn't your dad that's right although he did um their dad did call me up a few times and told me he had had a little bit too much to drink that I wasn't his daughter. He would just... He, but I thought he was... Uh, I don't know. I didn't really know, but she clarified it a- after I got married. Yeah, hold on one second. Hey, Carly! 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 Can you keep it down, please? I'm, t- oh. I'm telling you, I have a lot to deal with with him. <sighs> That's interesting. Um, he knows that we're in here doing this, and he's inside, uh, you know, yelling. That's why they wouldn't come back here that night. They left in the middle of the night. Oh, gotcha. So uh, you didn't know that until after you were married. So up until that point, um, what do you? I don't understand why you. Why are you? And then you're gonna come in here, walk in front of the camera. I'm sorry, man. Okay. What the? What? What the? Uh, Now it's louder. <laughs> I go through this stuff continually. Yeah. So just for the people that don't know, Uncle Carly suffers from what mental problems, issues? Bipolar. Is bipolar schizophrenic? Mm-hmm. No, there's no schizophrenic. He claims the doctor said that. And I looked at the letter from the doctor and it said bipolar. So that's how what, does he that's what how runs, does he end up like that's, on that's what runs in our family, bipolar. There's nobody schizophrenic. I no. always grew up 
thinking for some reason that he was schizophrenic. But he's not. So how does someone like bipolar see s- skulls on an airplane like he did when he went to Hawaii? Because he or, went into a psychosis. So what, is, what, what exactly is psychosis? Uh, that's what they used to call nervous breakdowns. Some people still call them that. So, I mean, exactly. But I he, mean, was, what also, exactly he is, was also smoking sherm. Right. I've smoked sherm in my life. Did you? Ooh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I never went through. There was people in the mental hospital that said they had a bad trip. That's why they were on there from that. Sure. Um, that's paranoia. Mm-hmm. And you can have paranoia if, 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 even if you're bipolar. Look it up. No, I'm not saying. I, I, oh. I honestly don't know. That's why I was Cause asking. Because I, I saw the paper. Because it, it was always interesting to me growing up with you when you would go through your mental illness where it seemed it seemed like whatever you were going through was schizophrenia it was just no. great craziness where no. you just turned into a different person you no were. i never had i'm not, I'm not schizophrenic i'm oh. bipolar okay but like a really extreme bipolar but you got to remember it took him 10 years to diagnose me and this was what in the 70s the seventies? Oh uh, no, eighty. No. Eighty, right? Like right after I, I was had, born. Right after you were born, I had the first one. Yeah, I was. They ex- put me in. I was the cause of it. Orange? No, they put me in orange. I can't remember. I remember the name for years. That hospital. Mm-hmm. I was in there for two months, wow. and I couldn't stand it anymore. And I heard the other patient saying, "You can go uh, out AMA, which is against." Doctor's advice. Okay. And that's what I did. Oh, you did. And then I went home for. Then it happened again in Whittier. Anyway, it happened a total of about twenty-two times. You, but, but you had breakdowns twenty-two times. Yes, but wow. Some of it was caused because they put me on an antidepressant. When which Aunt Kathy recommended because I was so depressed. Aunt Kathy, my 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 dad's sister. Yeah. She she was one of the good ones. She, uh, yeah, she was. Yeah. Uh, she recommended that, and it was called Tofranil. In about a week, I felt like a new person. On the Tofranil? Yes, but the, uh, the later on, the doctor explained to me, you can't do that because it puts you in a manic stage. That's why. Manic, I, like hy- yeah. hyper, like just. You can actually. Yeah, what does it mean to be in a manic state? Uh, it's the opposite of depressed. Uh, you you get too many projects going on. You don't sleep enough. You really don't eat enough. Uh, that's what that means. Mm. And then, of course, if you're not, you if you're not eating, you're not sleeping. sleeping you're what start, happens? You're what start, happens? Start hearing things. Become yes. paranoid. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I could go up a day without eating or not have enough sleep and get slightly paranoid. Yeah, I never had that paranoia, but I did get in uh, in psychosis. Mm. Can you speak a little bit closer to the... And, of course, they try a lot of different... You can get, like, all up on it. And, of course, they try a a lot of different drugs, especially before they really diagnose you. Some of them are horrible. A little hall doll left, left my jaw open locked, and I couldn't breathe. Wow. And then another time they gave it to me, uh, my hands were shaking so bad I couldn't write or anything, and uh, my stomach was upset, and I had this urge to get up and go back up and down, up and down, and ref- <laughs> it was crazy. Wow. Well, okay, so I want to go back a little bit because th- the the issues with mental illness actually are hereditary. They've... They they skipped grandmother right like they and they they talk about how it like will skip a generation. I hope there's not a whole lot of truth to that. Um, I think your environment definitely shapes whether you are going to feel that stress uh, enough to have mental breakdowns. Um, but her grandmother, uh, talk a little bit about um, your your grandmother and the issues that she had with mental illness. Okay, back in those days, they didn't even diagnose what 
disorder you had. Back in those days, like... I, this would be in the 30s. Wouldn't it be in the 30s? Well, grandmother was born in 1925. And but she might have had him before that. I don't, I'm not really sure about right. that. Yeah. yeah. They just put her in a a big hospital to rest called Baybury. I looked it up on the phone, and they actually had a picture of it on there. And uh, like I said, they didn't diagnose anything. They didn't have medication. They just put them in there and let them rest. And uh, so what, what she they, never really got better. What do they? What do they think it was? Well, I'm assuming now it was bipolar because that's what everybody well, else. Well, right, did. yeah. But did you, did you did you ever read up on what the medical field? I mean, I know they went through crazy things like lobotomies when they thought people were crazy. Or no, your grandmother told me they just had a rest. Uh, and, and she, she, she got better me, without medication. Yes, kind of. She went back and forth in there, mm -hmm. and. Uh, your grandmother told me when they told her that her brother had died, Jesse, the one that jumped off the out of the window, I think it was. Uh, he oh. was a night sleep. Uh, what do you call those people that wake up at night and walk around? Sleepwalker. Yeah, he was, a, and he jumped out of the window. When she, they when they told her that he had died, she just sat there and smiled at him. She, there was no was reaction. She, was she already sick? Or mentally, did she have a breakdown prior to that? Yeah, she that was she was in the hospital, yeah. When he had jumped out of the window? Yes. Holy uh -huh. shit. Yeah. That was her favorite brother, I guess. Not to make light of uh, someone jumping out of a window, but you think they would have, knowing that he had those tendencies to like to pick a place that was on the That's first floor. That's what I said, because he, <laughs> he did it before and his wife saved him. It happened before, and then he did it again. Yes, that's wow. what I don't. And he understand. was he was the artist, right? He was. Yes, uh, he was the artist. Grandmother would always talk about him. Yes, with that me was her her mom's uh, sister. Oh, gotcha. So that so she that happened. She she had did grandmother ever talk about like her grandmother if this was just uh, just a lineage a mental. Illness, nothing, bef nothing before her. No. Did they really like? Did they talk a lot about the? I guess like the old country. Like I, I know that like for grandmother, uh, like her parents didn't really want her speaking Italian when they first came over here, right? And that was one oh, of she must have told you something she didn't tell me. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that's what she said. That I think a lot of Italians were where they were trying to integrate into the American. Uh, the American culture and that, you know, they, that her, her dad would like get upset with her if she oh, spoke. Oh, she dying. never. Hey, Carly, you keep, keep walking in front of the camera. I'm sorry, man. I got to come in and hide here real quick. Come on, man. Well, you just have to I'm say, sorry, hey, I can I get a break? Uh, it's cool. I'll just leave that in there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, she had told me that, yeah, her her father would get upset with her about. Yeah, she never told me that. Yeah, I think that was the case with. I mean, I think that's a, the case for a lot of um, cultures that come over here. They sort of want to integrate and, um, you know, get because they they I know the Italians went through a lot of shit when they first came over here. You know, so if you're speaking Italian, they know that you're different, but they can sort of integrate into the society because they look white. You know what I mean? It's a lot That's, different. It's, it's different. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot different. Um, I noticed a lot of Italians had mixed with Irish. Yeah. yeah the yeah. neighborhoods, like, mm -hmm. in New York. and. How was it in Philadelphia? I think it's pretty much the same. Did you have, like, a, did you have a sense of a, a, a Italian identity over there when you were growing up? Was there a lot of Italians, a lot of people oh, speaking Oh, there was Italian? a lot of Italians, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know about speaking Italian. Uh, but my cousin married an Irish guy. Mm -hmm. and uh, So um, your, your, so your grandmother, that happened. She had that breakdown. When they told her about her brother and she... And uh, your grandmother said she just sat there and smiled. There was no 
recognition. And what ha- did she ever come out of that state after that? Um, I think so. Unfortunately, I think the last one, it was around or on Mother's Day. Um, they took her and they put the uh, straps on her. You know, to keep her controlled. Mm -hmm. And it it just must have sent her blood pressure way up. And she was begging her cousin to come and take them off of restraints. That's what you call them. The restraints? Yeah. And uh, she told her, I can't do that. I can't take them off of you. I just can't do it. And then she walked home. She remembers walking home over a bridge. And they called her and said... My grandmother had died. She she had a, a stroke, I think it was. And but co- because I... those um, restraints must have been too much for her. And she tried to she tried to tell the doctors, tried to tell everyone well, around her. Well, I don't know about that, but she tried to shit. tell her cousin. I mean, I'm sure she was telling the people that were working in the yes, in I, the hospital. I've been in restraints. Yeah. It's a terrible feeling. What, really, was, what, terrible. what was the first time that you were in restraints? Uh, I really can't remember because when I'm in those, was in those states, I was pretty much out of it. Yeah. But you can s- sort of like remember somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> but it must have been too much for her. Well, yeah, especially if they were, like, on too tight or... That's great. I had always thought for some reason that she had uh, committed suicide. Oh, no. Or something along those lines. No, that's no, that's what happened. Damn. That must have been a lot for grandmother, grandma to go through. Yeah, her her mom's death was really hard on her. She was 12. And... Uh, She's told me stories about they all ignored her. They did she ever tell ignored you those stories? Ignored who? Her, your grandmother. When your great grandmother died, mm. they gave all the attention to her older sister Connie, uh. and um, they all kind of ignored her. Made her feel real bad. But she had a little <laughs> little group of friends. They had a club, uh-huh. and they got together and bought her flowers. Or I don't know. They made her feel really good or something. Oh. Um, you know, it's it's interesting because I think that like being a kid, you, your perception could be totally different than what it was. Maybe you know, it could have been a lot of different things. You know, where that may have not happened, but because she, I guess, had a lot of different emotions going on, she perceived. That whole yeah, that could be true. Yeah, that could be true. I don't know because I f- I feel like that kind of carried over for her. Sorry, I'm gonna just adjust this. I knocked this and broke it again. <laughs> I can. No, I'm just saying. Um, since oh, the, the last the time, time, yeah. yeah. Um, so, all right. So, so she she passed away when she, grandmother was twelve. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, grandma grows up, she has you somewhere after the better part of the half century. Uh, you grew up in Philadelphia and you didn't know that your father that you had was not actually your father until you got married. Yep. She didn't tell me to like, and how, how old were you when you got married? 19. You were 19 years old? Mm Mm-hmm. Wow. So, okay, let's go back a little bit because you you lived up, you lived in Philadelphia until you were 13 years old. What happens after Philly? Uh, Well, first we moved to Florida. Uh, Florida? Florida. You went down to Florida for the weather? Mm -hmm. Uh Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Why did you you guys move? From Florida? Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know. They just were unhappy. My, my, you know, my mom and my stepdad. They didn't like it there. Okay, and this was. But my favorite teacher was there. In Florida. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Moore. He was my sixth grade. Mr. 
sixth grade. Yeah. Why was he? Why was he your favorite teacher? Oh, he was the best teacher. He made everything a game. Oh, that's always. Plus, cool. I was teacher's pet. Ah, uh, is this when you were going to skip a grade? No, that was Catholic school. That was Catholic school. Um, yeah, it's it's funny how the the really great teachers that you have just impact you so much, and you. I can't remember any of my other elementary school teachers' names, but I do remember Miss Starr. And you don't even remember this, but I I remember her telling you or my dad or one of the – I don't even remember who was there, but uh, she had told you that I had written a poem that was really, really good, and she thought it was exceptional for my age to be able to write metaphors and – my mm -hmm. description for things. And I remember that. I mean, that stayed with me where I always felt really empowered when it came to writing. And I always felt this confidence. And a lot of it stemmed from that point, just being a kid and having someone, you That's know, point, right. point yeah, out that, that you're that really kind, good. That kind of happened to me in school, too, a couple of times, the, the writing mm -hmm. and the teacher identifying it and pointing it out uh, to my mom when she came to school. Yeah. So uh, grandmother was with the same same guy because you know, a lot of people, um, I mean, ob they obviously don't know what I know, but she was with quite a few different fellers back in her day. And so she, Buck, this was Buck that she was with? That was her husband. That, that was the husband. Yeah. Okay. That was the hu the husband. That the blonde uh, haired, blue eyed Buck. Okay. And so you guys moved down with Buck, Grandma, Grandma, and then your two older siblings. Three, three old, older siblings, right? Three. Three. You moved down to Florida. No, Buck was way gone before. Oh, that. Buck was way gone. Where did Buck go? <laughs> <laughs> they got a divorce. Well, when did they get a divorce? Oh. Uh, Gosh, it would be in the 60s. Okay. I think it was like in 59, though. Were you, so what year did, what year did that happen? How old were you when that happened? Uh, I'm guessing uh, 59. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you can laugh at that. And we're back. We just took a quick break so my mom could pee. No, she's actually wearing a diaper right now. So she, she, just, <laughs> she just went while she was doing the interview. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, man. All right, so Buck is out of there. Buck uh, Buck is grandmother. Long gone. Long gone. He's just grandmother's like, was he abusive or anything? Or? Alcoholic. Alcoholic. Um, so how old were you when they split? I think it was six. So you were six. So she, oh, this is another another fact about gra Grandma. She was going to be a nun. She right, right. That's right. <laughs> why are you? That's a why, big, why are you laughing? Because that's a big fat. <laughs> I wouldn't be here if she had. No, that's true. But it's also very interesting that this lady that was going to be a nun ended up having how many different guys she was with. Uh, and she didn't smoke, she didn't drink, she didn't curse. Well, yeah, I don't know about she, the cursing. But, but yeah. she uh she definitely liked to to get with different guys over time. Um so he was long gone. And so who's who was your dad? Or how did you, Okay, so you didn't know, so let's go back. So she was with this guy? Wait, you were Wait, hold on. Yeah, I'm confused. All right. So, and I'm sure uh, so you're thinking Buck is your dad. You said that he's not your dad, but she, he was still around up until you were six years old. What, what happened there? Well, during the time she was separated from Buck oh, is so, when she met my dad. Oh, gotcha. So she he was delivering she was bread. She was separated. Yeah. She, oh, he was delivering bread, all he, right. He was delivering <laughs> bread, and he asked her for a date. Uh -huh. And uh, apparently it went a little further than that. So when she got found out she was pregnant, the doctor told her, go back to your husband and just pretend that baby is his. 
The doc- doctor the, told her the that. The doctor yeah. told her this? Yeah, the doctor told her. So oh, that's what man. she did. She went, she, my dad wanted to marry her, but my uncle Joe, her brother, talked her out of it. Why is that? I guess he didn't like him. Right. Well, why didn't he like him? She never told me that. Did you say something about a temper or something that he's like, oh, he's got a really bad temper? Did he say that? She said that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah. I mean, I can see, see that. I mean, it's been passed down, hasn't it? You have quite the temper. Me? <laughs> Just I do joke. not have a bad temper. <laughs> So your dad was delivering the loaves of bread to yes. grandma's. He was slathering it up with butter and everything. And he gave her fresh ca- out the fresh out the oven. And he gave her cannolis. Ah, that's the way to any Italian woman's heart is through cannolis. And when she was pregnant with me, she went crazy on cannolis. Oh yeah, I would bring her cannolis up until yes. the last point, and she just would always talk about. Oh, you remember my dad used to bring me cannolis and she would always go through the the bit about that. And it just, that was a nice little bond that we had. It's funny because I brought you cannolis today for Thanksgiving. I know. Thank you so much. Um, (laughs) So, um, all right. So you, you're 12, you moved down to Florida. Grandma just moved down to Florida by herself? Uh, No. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, no. See, <laughs> the thing with grandma about, and I love her dearly, but the thing with grandma <laughs> is I told her all the time, Mom, you jumped from one frying pan skillet into the pot or whatever that expression uh-huh. is. You know what that expression is? I'm not saying it right. Uh, no, I mean, I, it's... It, uh, it means you jumped from one situation to the same one. Oh, Okay. And uh, she apparently had met Andy Anderson. Out of the fryer into the pot? Yeah, something like that. Okay. And uh, She, she met, met who? Andy Anderson. Andy Anderson, okay. Yes. And, and who is Andy Anderson? He, she <laughs> met him in Philadelphia? Yeah, they, he, she, they worked at the hospital. It's the same place. Oh, okay. Grandmother was a nurse, mm-hmm. right? Right. Okay. She met Andy. But they what think did, they what worked did, in the psych ward. <laughs> Makes yeah. sense. It makes sense. Um, so this guy Andy was this the guy that was running game that was doing all the the gambling like the pony rides and all this. Yes, that's Andy. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So he was he originally doing this stuff? Was he okay? So all right. Anyway, so we'll we'll get to that. So she meets Andy, uh, falls in love for the how many the fourth time, third time, fourth time. The fourth. No, I think that would only be the third time. Third time. Okay. That we know of anyway. Well, she told me some personal stuff that I'm not really going to talk about. But uh, What is it? It's well, just, like, just me and you. It's not going to be you and me. It's, no, it's on just, a podcast. It's just going to be me and you. You and I. Just tell me right here. And the plants. Chris, you're doing a podcast. How can it just be you and me and the plants? You're not going to tell me? Not on the podcast, no. I'll bleep it out. I want to... Okay. All right. So <laughs> she uh, she meets Andy at the psych ward, and she falls madly in love with him and then decides that Philadelphia is too much. I do not think that was the case. I think she just wanted somebody to help her out, but... Uh, you know, it, she was coming home from work down one of those snow piles, and she almost had a serious accident. She said to herself, I'm getting out of this weather. So, Florida. So, Florida. Yes. That's why all the people are like, I'm over the snow. I'm going to Florida. Yes, that's it. For the it. sunshine. Um, so, they go down to Florida. And how how was that for you? Like going down there what was how was that? It was fine to me. I was a kid. Uh, I had talk a little. Fa- talk into the microphone. I had my favorite teacher, uh, Mr. Moore. Uh, mm-hmm. There was sand all over the place all the time from the hurricanes. Mm-hmm. It was Fort Lauderdale is uh, outside of Miami. Yeah, and up into that point, were you having a pretty normal childhood, or? 
Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, so I, I you know, because I wanted to talk about, because, you know, I want to talk about the things leading up to maybe the possibilities of you going through your, your mental, um, you know, issues. I mean, other than maybe like biologically, but when you had. Well, there are triggers. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying, like the, the triggers, because I, I think up until this point, it just seems like, you know, you're just kind of floating along. But I mean, what were some of the things that you think sort of stand out like growing up? Uh, for you up until like leading to Florida as far as a mental illness just things that you went through yeah well we know what the trigger was in my case what okay can you think about it for a second well no I mean I was thinking about when you had said that you had almost gotten like raped or something like that in a lobby at one point Oh, that was terrifying. Oh. Yeah. Oh, how old were you when that happened? Oh, gosh. Uh, I would say, I think, seven or eight. You were seven or eight? Yes. And were you able to talk about those things with adults back then? Because I feel like... Yeah, but things- back at that time, the adults didn't take what kids said... Uh, because, like, when that happened, uh, nothing was really done. Yeah. The police weren't called or anything. And wh- what happened? We just what moved. Ha- we moved. You moved because of that incident? Or I'm not sure. You don't even really yeah, remember? Would you care to talk about that? Well, I mean, what well, exactly like, happened? Okay, well, um, I think I went in. It had a lobby like hotels have, but smaller. Where you lived, or yes, where where, where I your lived, apart, yes. like apartment complex. Yes, uh huh. In Philadelphia, and this boy was like fourteen, uh, and he came to me, and uh, he said, uh, "Pull your pants down, or I'm gonna stab you with the knife, or something like that." He had a knife. They pull, like, pulled out the knife on you. Yes. And I started running to the doors and knocking on the doors, and nobody was answering. Oh, man, that must have been terrifying. It was. But then this grown-up man came in through there, and he ran away. Damn. Yeah, that, that, was, that was scary. And like I said, the police were never called or... And you weren't able to talk to a ther like now it's like you know it'd be like oh you gotta go talk to a therapist you have to no just nothing you sort of have to it's very interesting interesting and that's why I asked that you you know what sort of came about that incident because I feel like you know a lot of issues for I guess baby bo- baby boomers is the the parents like really were about repressing any sort of emotion or sort of sweeping things under the rug and not really like deal, yeah like being molested it. yeah not believing yeah. oh they wouldn't do that you're making that up you know that kind of stuff they didn't do that uh, they just didn't do anything yeah i mean it's unfortunate because we've ha- we've had to do- deal with that sort of thing in uh like inner family stuff when it yeah. comes to that stuff. Yeah, we dealt with a lot of things, boy. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to talk about those things, too. Um, so you you end up going to Florida, and then you're living a pretty good life for the most part? Mm-hmm, yes. Yeah, and then what what happens after that? Well, they didn't like Florida, so we moved to California. Mm-hmm. So where where did the whole the whole thing come about with the horses and the scams and the fake raffles and stuff like that with Andy? Oh, that was back there. Yeah, you want to talk? He never talk. he never did anything like that out here. Um. Well, the one scam that he did was. Uh, he had a phony raffle that, that somebody would win this pony. 
mm-hmm. and they really didn't win it. My sis, they said my sister won the raffle. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they called up to ask her how she liked her new pony. And she said, what new pony? Who called Who called up? Uh- the people apparently that ran the raffle or something. I don't know. But yeah, so he, you guys, he had a pony, and you guys would go from, like, what would you do with the pony? You would give, like, pony rides or something like that? Uh, not at that time, but later on we did. Yeah, we, we gave pony rides. Oh, gotcha. In fact, coming across country, that's how we made it out here. We gave pony rides with the ponies. Yeah. And, and did I, you... Did you guys know where you were going to stay or anything like that? And at this point, you so you have, was Carly born yet or Carly was born out here? No, Carly was born, yeah. Carly was born in Philadelphia, too. Oh, he was. So he was he was here. But he was little. Oh, wow. But he's, he's, he's mixed. He was the first kid that was mixed, that was black, black and Italian. So uh, that's another, let's, that's another story. <laughs> well, let's go back. So, um, she was with Andy when Carly was born. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, explain to me. That how was that, an affair. She had an affair. Yes. And that guy Andy was okay with the affair. Well, he was okay with the baby. He was okay with the baby. I don't think he could have kids anymore or something. I mm-hmm. don't know. So how was that, I mean, back then, because that definitely wasn't something that transpired frequently or really accepted for the most part, maybe a little bit more in the, the north northern part of, like, you know, Philadelphia, but she was with a black man back then. Well. And how was that for you? Like to, I guess you you had to have been like seeing all this go down and you had to have like processed it. How, what were it, you? it didn't really hit me or Dennis because we they weren't old enough to really realize the implications of all that. We How old were you when he when Carly was born? Eight. He was eight. I mean, I was eight. You were eight. Yeah. And you no quite you didn't ask any questions or anything. No, it, you know what I mean. It, it just we were kids and it didn't. It didn't really register. Did they like say that it was Andy's baby, or did she say it was Andy's baby, or? Um. No, but it made it easier because of him being the stepdad, they just told people he was adopted. See what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because she was with him. Right. Well, I mean, and that turns out not to be the case. She had, so she had she had an affair. <laughs> Grandma's pretty crazy when it when it comes to that. So she, uh, so it's uh, you, your three older brothers, and then Carly, and you guys are traveling, doing kind of shady things along the way to get out here. Did you? Did they know where they were gonna stay or anything like that? Like, how did they? Yeah. No, we had a tent. We stayed in the tent sometimes. One time we stayed in a junkyard. How was that like for you, like being a kid? Were you like, oh, we're on vacation, like, uh, you know, not Don't, a big deal? I mean, you didn't... It didn't, you know, it didn't... I think it made me on the shy side, though. It made you on the shy side? Yeah, because uh, uh, during my childhood, we moved around so much, I was always started going to different schools. Mm-hmm. And you know how schools are. The kids already are in their cliques. Yeah. And you have to break in there every time. So I think that's true, although my brother Dennis isn't shy. But everybody reacts different, you know. Right. Well, I was going to say everybody reacts different to trauma or, yeah, like what they're what they're going through. And it's obvious to me that, like, for you, you may have not noticed things on the surface, but you had to have, like, known something, a part of you had to understand that this was sort of not a normal life right like i mean even though you kind of like went with it but that's what i'm talking about the the repression of the emotions and repressing like to sort of i'm sure that you went through things and you had questions but you didn't really have anybody to talk about those things with right 
and when you're going through that there was there was there wasn't really i mean there there was nothing in you that was like this is not like a nor like i don't like this i don't like living like this mm, trying to remember i mean it's yeah, okay like it's i okay said to be like i said i didn't like the moving around of school mm. um so you you come out to Los Angeles? Is that that was the goal? The goal was just like actually, we're gonna... that's not true. Uh, we went to San Diego. We went. He wanted to. Uh, my stepdad wanted to live in San Diego. He had been in the Navy there. And we had those ponies, right? And we were giving those pony rides still. And one of the kids, a little girl, fell off the pony, and the parents were going to sue. So they left San Diego and went up to Los Angeles. That's and were you guys staying in a in a place at that point, or were you guys still camping out? No, we got an apartment. You got an apartment, Linwood. Linwood. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I'm well, saying when you were in San Diego. Uh, did we stay in a motel down there? No, I don't remember how, camping out. How I think long we were you stayed in, in a motel? How long were you in San Diego? Not long. Oh, you weren't there long? Mm-mm. What's, how long? <laughs> like, what, I mean, like a month, like two months, couple weeks? Couple weeks. And that happened with the the girl? Yeah, she fell off the pony. Wow. And then, you, so you guys are like, you dipped. Ran away. You just ran away. Yeah. And then you, what made them decide to come up to Los Angeles area? I think it was just someplace different that was nearby. Did did they have any like connections here? I mean, did grandmother like grandma ever say like why they came to here? No, there's no I connections, think, not at all. Well, I feel like you're leaving a part out about Andy. Was Andy a pool hustler? Was it him? My dad was a pool hustler. Your dad? Mm -hmm. I'm so confused. So how how did how did the the connection with James another her she so she, you guys end up coming going to Linwood, and there is something that happens with her with Andy, but then she ends up being with a, a new guy that she ends up marrying. Well. She left him because, you know, he was a con man. So he was a con man. He was. Yeah, he was a con man. And she didn't know that. But he was a, he was one of those people that was very intelligent. He had graduated college and everything, but he was marred. You know, he was, he was flawed. F flawed. Flawed. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, uh, yep, she jumped out of the skillet frying pan into the... <laughs> yeah, but what was the... So I, I, I know that there is also something else going on as far as Andy had introduced her to a gentleman named James who I thought that they knew from pool hustling or something like that at a pool hall in Linwood. Uh, it was in Compton, and it was a bar that she met him. Ah, uh, gotcha. So she was with Andy at the time. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I think the expression is jumping from the frying pan into the skillet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll she, look it up. That's what she did again. Yeah, but so she, but the guy Andy somehow introduced her to James? That's right. Can you sort of elaborate on on what that was? <laughs> yeah, all right over there. It's your head to explode. I mean, I, I, well, I think it's fine. I mean, you don't you don't have to go into detail about it, but she she had like he had a thing about 
grandmother or his women or grand, like being with a black guy or something like that? Or? Yes, that's exactly okay. right. I know you don't want to go. <laughs> I probably wouldn't want to go to. That's I'm my, just trying to. That's so, my mom we're talking about. Yeah, but she, you know, I mean, it's beautiful, strong Italian lady. But, you know, when I found out some of those things that, you know, and she even says, oh, I'm so embarrassed about it. Like, it's like, you know, she burped in church or something. I'm like, oh, I'm. I was so embarrassed about. She just kind of, kind of plays it down a little bit, you know. Um, but she, she ended up meeting James because the guy Andy somehow wanted to see them together or something like that, and so she left Andy at that point to get with James. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then then she got pregnant. Then she got pregnant with Stella. Yes. My Auntie Stella. Yeah. Shout out to Auntie Stella. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's amazing. And um, so at this point, how old are you? Is it registering yet? Like what is going on? Yeah, I, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> well, to, tell me about it. So you end up moving to Linwood, which is a primarily like all black. Not at that time. It not wasn't. at the, oh, that was no. the sixties. The that was uh, Compton was, but not uh, not Linwood. Not Linwood, but you went to. Didn't you go to like a primarily like all black school? Like for the most part, like percentage wise. No, not at that time. Not at that time. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Well, so how was it being like? Sort of living in this bubble of your your kid like perception of the world, and then all of a sudden you become like a te- you're around like a teen, right? At this point, yeah, I ran away from home. You ran away from home. Why? Tired of the the moving ar- around, and I wasn't happy about James. What? So, what was what was the situation with him? I didn't like him. Why didn't you like him? I just didn't like him. Maybe there was some prejudice there. I don't know. Well, you, I mean, he was also like physically and and verbally abusive, right? I don't, yeah. Um, the day after they got married, my mom told me that later, some guy asked her for directions and he drug her by her hair all the way down the street to their house. I said, Mom, wasn't that a red flag? Yeah. Well, I think up until this point, we see that grandmother was not very... She must have been colorblind when it came to looking for red flags up until that point with men. You know what I mean? Like, so... And, yeah, I I would imagine that probably would have been, but given her circumstances prior to that, like, nah. (laughs) I mean, there was, Yeah, I, I wish I could say a lot of nice things about him, but... He was really mean, and uh, he drank too much, and when he didn't drink, he was even meaner. And I just feel like he sort of ruined my teenage years. Yeah. He didn't want you to even have friends, let alone boy, boys. Mm. And you were at that point. How old were you when you ran away? Well, I ran away uh, twice. I ran away um, when I was... Uh, 12, and I stayed in juvenile for a year. Then they had a riot, and I wanted to go home. What, uh, you were in Soma, right? I was in both Central and Soma. You were in, oh, I didn't know you were in Central. Yeah. That's my alumni, too. Oh, I don't like who would have? Question. Who would have thought young Debbie doing doing time for running away. That's crazy that they gave you that much time, by the way, for running away. But you well, said that you could have went home. I could have went home. But That's right. the, you, when they had, like, the race riot thing, you were like, oh, no, yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah. Um, but I, I just sort of made that connector right now. It's kind of trippy that we were both, like you, being a teenage girl, like, thinking about your future and, like, your kids. You, that would have been the last thing. In your mind that you're... you're That's... It would have been, yeah. Both of your kids would have ended up in that place. Um, So anyway, the second time, uh, I was only gone like overnight. The the big earthquake. What year was this? What was that first big earthquake? 72? Yeah, they made that movie about it, right? Yeah, well, anyway... (laughs) 
Uh, so so you, were, you were in there when that big earthquake happened? I was at, at, at a, a boy's, a, a guy's apartment. And uh, that place was shaken. It was an apartment being shaken. I said, oh, my God, this is God punishing me. I've got to go. <laughs> That's what you thought? <laughs> oh, okay. So this is, this is like the second time that you ran away. Yeah, but I, I didn't stay you. gone uh, that, that long. I went home the next day. So what at this point, right, or you know, going back to when you were in juvenile hall, like you must have told your mom, grandma, that you were unhappy and like what what did you Well she only came to see me once. She was pregnant with Stella. Mm. She was working. Is that the is I mean, is that the point you started reflecting on your life? Like up into that point, you're like, you know what I mean? Sort of making connectors that you weren't living this type of life that you thought you were living, like this normal life. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And juvenile hall is a bad place for inexperienced younger girls because they put you around these real hardened, like prostitutes and uh, unsavory girls. Uh, I like the word unsavory. Well, I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> well, I, I think that's... The, Inexperienced little, you know, young girls. Yeah. Around these kind of criminal type older girls. Chris, I'm getting tired. You're getting tired? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to... Do you want to expedite the process? Yes. <laughs> Is it tiring talking about... Your, your I don't know why. I'm just getting tired. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's also a lot. That, that silly thing in there woke me up all night. It got up at 3 o'clock. Oh, you did? Yeah, that wind was blowing that awning on my window. Mm. Anyway, go I ahead. I feel like the wind is a metaphor, you know? Do the you? winds of change. The winds blowing away the old... All the small is is he talking to anybody? Is he, is he, he talking? could be, but <laughs> could not be. <laughs> um, so let's so, a lot you know at that point, a lot of dysfunction, abuse, verbal. Um, you end up, I guess, like meeting my dad working at a hospital. So you end up getting into the medical field, right? Yeah, so if you want to call it that. <laughs> well, what else do you call <laughs> because, it? I don't know. Because nurses' aides aren't thought of highly. Oh, yeah, you're right there where the janitors are. <laughs> well. <laughs> well. Um, you do do medical stuff. Yeah. It's the medical field, right? I mean, yes, it around, is. around it. So, it is. So you end up uh, meeting my dad. He swept you off your feet. Like no man had ever done up until that point. He did. He did. He, he gave you the whole. He was a charmer. That's that's what I've heard. That's what I. So, um, you end up meeting him, and then how you guys got married pretty soon, right? Like after you guys were dating, or how long did it? How I don't long did think it, it was that long. About six months. Six months. Damn. I don't even know if it was that one. Wow. So I mean, there, I'm gonna uh, sort of glaze over a lot of a lot of things. So I want to. So you end up um, having you get pregnant. How? When did? What year did you get pregnant? How many years after you guys got married? I think it was three. Three years. I wanted to get pregnant right away, and I wasn't getting pregnant. So I went to the doctor, mm. and he said I had it to. To testosterone imbalance, and he gave me some pills and a couple months testosterone? later. Testosterone? Yeah. Oh, okay. A lot of people don't know it, but women have that too, that hormone. Mm -hmm. And a um, couple months later, I got pregnant. Uh, and you got pregnant not just a single? No, they didn't know as much as they know now about that, you know, ultrasound and stuff. Uh, so you only it thought would, you were going to have one baby? Yeah, until I was five months. Oh, until you were five months. So you, at that point, found out that you were going to have twins. Yeah, the the, nur the nurse said, oh, I think I hear another heartbeat. Wow. And then your heartbeat just started 
you got excited, I would imagine. Yeah, I was. Um, so you <laughs> gave birth to Brian and Eric. And Eric, yeah. And so you were happy and then, you know, sort of I guess like the build up we were talking about earlier when I guess like triggers started happening. Um you had lost Eric six months to to Sids? Four. He was only four months. Yeah. And um you said it was like a week after he had got they had gotten shots or something like that. Like it wasn't even a week. Uh what did they, they he went had, he went to the doctor on Thursday. They went to the doctor on Thursday. They got the shot on Friday and he died on Monday. Which shots were they? Their first shots. Uh, I understand they gave him even sooner now. Uh, the four month first shot. And then he had passed away from what they what they called it is SIDS for the people that don't know. Yes. SIDS is what? It's unknown. Sudden infant death it's syndrome. Unknown, yeah. They and they still with all the technology that they have, they don't they don't know why why it happens. No, but I still wonder about the shot. Yeah. Well And your brothers weren't identical twins, so they didn't have to match up about everything. Yeah, they were fraternal twins. Mm -hmm. What what was that like for you going through that? Hell. Yeah. Worst thing ever. Yeah, I I mean I, I think that like when I look at Brian, a lot of the things that he went through like later in life were partly because of that, you know. That bond, that energy share that they had in the womb and to be born together and then to have something taken away from you and you know you don't even you can't even process it but there's like emotion and there's energy there and I think that he I don't know always, I always felt like there was something missing when you looked at him and there was always just something off and I'm you know I think a lot of it was because of that and then what about the chaos around him when it happened even though he was a little baby, maybe that affected him. You know, the chaos around him? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I mean, seeing you're, you know, you going through what you went through, um, what were, how did you get out of that? I mean, what, what, what was, I never really asked you what your process was of just, you know, I know. I'm sure for a good amount of time it was just numbness and numbness. not and not being able to pro but how did you get through that? Well, I can't say that I'm strong, but I don't think I really go to pieces easy. You know, emotionally. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying or not? I mean, I I don't know if I have a good reference point for that. Like as far as you like not going to pieces because my memories growing up were you going through mental illness and so yeah. But I didn't I didn't it hadn't started yet. No, I understand that, but I'm just saying like I don't I don't really know. You know I don't know. I, I think I, I just pushed it pushed it away. Yeah, that's, that's it's really. it's like when your grandmother died last year. Did you see me like sobbing and? Yeah, I mean, I I did. I mean, you here did? And there. Yeah, I mean, I guess as much as I think we we're all just trying to. But what I'm saying through. is I don't usually do that. I usually get numb and I push things like uh, I push away the fact that Brian's in prison for all that time. I push it. I push it away out of my mind. Yeah. Do you think that you you push that so much with like Eric, you know, dying and you losing a son. And then when I'm, I'm born, I come into the, the picture, like that's a trigger for you. Like, did you, did you think about, did that make you think about like losing a child? Like knowing that you were pregnant again and, and that you were going to. Yeah. I did have some fear. I watched you like a hot boy. Yeah. 
Well, I would imagine that it had to have done something. And then, you know, shortly after you experienced one of the, your first, like, you know, breakdowns, mental breakdowns. Yeah. Um, the, some man came out after that happened to your brother and he said, sometimes these things affect you as much as two years later and stuff like that. Affects you later. Yeah. So that's probably what it was. Um, and he said a lot of people get divorced. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I always felt that that was why, like, Dad had... he. I don't know, he treated Brian a little bit differently than, than myself. You know what I mean? It, it, it just... There was always something there, and I was always aware of that growing up, that he treated him different. And I know that Brian acted out a lot, but, you know, he definitely... There was something there, and I don't know. Why if wouldn't it, he treat him better instead of worse? You know, it's because it can go either way. You know, people that have grown up in whatever trauma they they have gone through, it's like you don't really understand it. Why someone? You know, sometimes it's not even like it's not like a conscious choice. You know, I just it's almost like like we were talking about earlier with like trauma, like triggers that I don't even. Maybe it was a trigger to see him all the time. Maybe it was this trigger of this like life, and then, and then you know what happened with you, like after I was born. So you, so you end up having your your first mental breakdown. Do you remember? I know that you say you don't remember it all, but do, do, the first time that it happened, like I, I want to know, I want to understand. And I want to know what that's like, that experience. There, there is a movie called Julian and the Donkey Boy. Uh, this guy, Harmony Corinne, had made this movie. And his uncle suffered from schizophrenia. So he made this movie that was done in a way that he thought this is what his his uncle was experiencing through schizophrenia. So he used a digital camera and really long shutter speed and it was just kind of like this weird movie you know but he was trying to understand like what his uncle would go through and I think I've asked you this over and over like what what do you go through when you're in that when you've been in that state and um more specifically like at that that first time that you went through that and what what was the lead up to that do you remember, like, the, the lead-up to the first time they I got just into I remember what other people told me, basically. I didn't sleep or eat for two weeks. My weight went down to 92 pounds. And then I started hallucinating. I, that's the only time during through the whole years that I hallucinated like that. What What type of hallucinations? Oh, I don't remember, but... Your Aunt Diana told me I was holding your brother real tight and I wouldn't let go. Holding Brian really tight? Yes, uh-huh, and I wouldn't let go. Like to the point of it, it she was had scary? To get, she, yeah, she had to get, a, had to get a, me away from him. Wow. And you don't, you don't remember any, uh, any of that? What was, what, was, what was happening previous? I can't, I can't remember uh, what the hallucination was. But I know I hallucinate. Guess you got to remember, I didn't sleep for two weeks. At all? Not one wink? I don't think so. They said I didn't sleep. And then the other time in Lancaster, when I stayed up for five nights, that's when they diagnosed me as bipolar. And Look how long it took for them to diagnose me. <clears throat> what what it? What was going on, like, previous to your breakdown? No, no, nothing unusual. Nothing at all? Or we- no, the di- Diana said the doctor said it was them being there and too much Who? stress. Who? Diane and, and the boys, Robbie and Raymond. Oh, they were living with you? Yeah. So when they said that, uh, actually, they told your dad that. When you, they told your dad that he made them uh, move, and then we moved to Whittier. 
Is that when it happened or, or it happened? No, it happened in Santa Ana. Oh, it happened in Santa Ana. Yeah. You were just a little itty bitty baby. Wow. So when you, how did you get back to, I guess, a quote unquote normal state of mind? Remember I told you that was the first time I went to Orange, whatever the name of that hospital is. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't think I had a normal state of mind because I checked out against medical advice. Oh, gotcha. So when I I was in Whittier for a while, and then I had another one. What do you mean a while? What's a while? A couple of months. Just a couple of months? Mm-hmm, yep. Because they uh, didn't put you on medication or anything. You just kind of you dipped out of the hospital? Yeah. And that's where I had the incident with my grandmother, your great-grandmother, sitting at the end of the bed and telling me it's going to be all right. And when I told your grandmother that, she said, oh, Debbie, that can't be true. She only speaks Italian. I don't know. This was her mom, the one that had died yes. when Grandma was 12? Yeah. And I said, uh, but Mom, she made me feel better. I don't care what you say. What's well, interesting because that she she came to you of all people because you didn't you never met her or anything like I that. I know, but I knew at that point I knew there I knew I was having mental problems. I knew it because your brother was starting to look strange to me and stuff. What do you mean? He was starting to look like like maybe the devil's son, that kind of crazy stuff. And. Then I wrote on the front door, Jesus lives here, and I put all the holy cards up. Your grandmother said that your Aunt Connie did that. Put all the holy cards up on the windows, like protection type thing. And I knew I was having them. So you were kind of aware at that point that you were having, you were yeah, kind of yeah. still there, like conscious enough to yes, be able to. Yeah. And, but you couldn't, I guess like fight against it it was just something that no then your grandmother came and, and uh, got me and the boys and where where was my dad at this point your dad had left because uh wait my he left you my dad left you when you were yeah. mentally sick yes because Ooh. well i don't think i was mentally sick when he left but uh, he was in the bedroom, and um, I, we had an extension, and I picked the phone. He was talking to that lady, Judy, at his job, and I got really mad. And I threw the wedding ring at him, and I said, get out. Don't come back. I don't want to see your ugly face again. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he did. He got out. And uh, there was something going on because uh, he ended up dating her and driving her car. And mm -hmm. how long from that time when and you got sick again? When you started to feel like the connection to uh, mm, seeing, well, tough, seeing Bri Brian be demonic, which is not too far from the truth. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's kind of blurry that whole thing, boy. Yeah, I bet. I bet it's like pretty blurry. I know the neighbors got me some coupon things to buy food, and I bought bought chocolate. I mean, it was just not normal. Were we getting the chocolate? Were you yes, feeding us you were chocolate? The chocolate? Is yes. this when the paint incident happened? Yes, that's when the you paint were letting us play with paint, yes. but like paint that you paint the walls, or just yes, it's very interesting. Um, but you kind of remember that. It's weird because I vaguely, I feel like... I don't I, remember letting I, you play with the how paint. old? How old was I? You were little. You know, only between one and two. But it's weird that I vaguely remember that. I vaguely oh. remember being at But what did place. I tell you I remember? Do you remember that? No. I'd, I was real depressed about everything. Uh, but I would get up in the morning and you would be in that crib in that little onesie. Mm -hmm. And you'd be, you never were crying. You'd be had that peek your head around, big old smile on your face, happy to see me every morning. Little did I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that that was when you were on your own. That was when you were by yourself. Uh, I think so. Yeah. 
Wow. So my dad dips out on you even when he, like, did he find out that you were mentally sick? Like, what did he say? Like, oh, shit, I got to go help out. I got to go take care of them. Uh, he did come back. Right. I'm going to take a, hold on, wait, take a quick break. Uh, so we took a little break there. Um, although I think we might take a break. Is this, this going to be, will there be a part two with you? Oh, they will be a, there will be a part two. Really? Yes. That means we got to do this again? Well, that's right. I'm exhausted. Are you exhausted over there? Yes. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to be back for a part two. And because we have a lot to discuss because uh, there's, I mean, from my age until now, we have to talk about all the in-between, right? That's correct. That is correct. How has it been for you thus far? Very interesting. Has really? it? Yeah. What's been interesting about it? Talking this much. You're not used to talking this much? No. You mean, um, you, I, you don't have conversations about things? No, we just covered a lot of territory. Yeah, and we have a lot more to talk about. So I think yeah, we're, you're getting tired. Um, you want me to get your your little, your pillow and your blankie ready? You take a nap? Or? No. What are you looking at over there, lady? The chair? Oh. You were pointing <laughs> over there. I was pointing to your bedroom. Oh. Um, get you all cozy. Get you in for a nap. <laughs> it's going to be 2 o'clock soon, so you'll be eating dinner. So um, I uh, thank you for being on on this podcast. Have you listened to the have you, you haven't even listened to the other podcast now? Yeah, I haven't listened to all of them. Wow. Thanks for the support. I really appreciate that. Moment. I subscribed. Oh, wow. You know how to do that? I liked. I shared. You liked and you shared and you subscribed. That's what you should do, too, if you haven't already. Thank you, Mom. So we'll be back for a part two. We're gonna, I'm going to probably have other people on in between that time. But when you uh, come back, we'll, we'll further talk about our joint experiences growing up because uh, it was quite turbulent for some very interesting times uh, for both of us. So hopefully we can connect on those things. You're just breathing all like... Uh, I was getting close to the mic. You were getting close to the microphone. Yes. It's the most action you've had in a while. Anyway. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> All right, thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you uh, click on one of these videos. If you haven't already, uh, please subscribe. Definitely helps us out. Or you can go to anchor.fm slash screaming out a wall podcast to support it. You can sign up for a monthly subscription if you want. Or just like and subscribe. That's all. I can't ask for too much. Right? That's right. That's right, son. All right, we'll check you out on the next episode. Thank you for watching. Peace. Bye. Bye. What can you can you do like a little Barry White like that? <laughs> huh? Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are you rebelling against? What do you got? We're trying to change something. Skateboarding is a way of learning how to redefine oh, the world around you. The owners of this country don't care about the poor in your own. Oh, no, baby, push me. Push me again. Now. We've been out of war.